Okay, guys, I'm here today with John Danner, huge honor for me, as always, and Placid. And uh, guys, this week, John is showing an entire structure all about the American luck, the Americana as well. And uh, it's part of the Master of the Move series that John is filming lately. And uh, John, can you explain a little yeah, more? Yeah, I'm actually uh, very interested to talk about this one, Bernardo, because I think it's fair to say when you and I started Jiu-Jitsu, probably the first move you got taught in terms of submission holds is from the mount. Yeah, yeah, the American lock from the mount. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a strange thing, Bernardo. Normally, the first moves you learn in Jiu-Jitsu are the moves which are the most successful in competition. Elbow skate, okay? You use that every day you're in Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, rear naked strangle. You learn that you, it's the most successful move in all of Jiu Jitsu. Um, armbar. Yeah, armbar. Judy Gatami. You use that all the time. Typically, uh, there's a direct correlation between how foundational a move is and how successful it is. And if you look at most of the foundational moves, they are the most successful moves in Jiu Jitsu. But the American lock is the great exception to the rule. It's one of the first moves you learn. But if you look at international competition, it's one of the less successful moves. And so it's, it has this weird position in Jiu-Jitsu. It's one of the first moves you learn, but it's one of the ones you don't see so much at World Championship competition. Compare that with all the other ones, rear naked, armbar, et cetera. Those are the ones you see every day in, in, in competition. So you've got to ask this question, why, why is it that it's so foundational, but it doesn't seem to get it, the glory of the other major submission holds. And so I was always fascinated by this question. Um, one thing uh, I learned uh, early on when I started doing Jiu-Jitsu, of course, I started for self-defense reasons. And I absolutely categorically believe that when it comes to self-defense Jiu-Jitsu, one of the best, if you're gonna choose joint locks as your method of self-defense, I don't always advocate that because I believe if you do attempt a joint lock in a fight, you pretty much have to be committed to the idea of breaking the limb. Um, and that's a big step, obviously. You don't want to take that decision lightheartedly. Uh, but if you are in a situation where you have to break someone's limb, I believe the American lock is the best self-defense lock because it, it takes the least risk. And the, the injuries that it can create are absolutely devastating. It's, um, there's a big difference in Jiu-Jitsu between the, the linear locks, which are quite dangerous, but they're never going to completely incapacitate someone, as opposed to the twisting locks where you just get terrible injuries, like spiral fractures of the bones. And the American lock is one of the most devastating in terms of what it can potentially do to, to an opponent, um, to an adversary in, in a real fight. So uh, I've always believed that every Jiu-Jitsu player has a duty to learn the American lock to its maximum potential because of its potential in self-defense situations. If you had to, in, a, in an extreme situation, take an extremely aggressive and dangerous person out of the fight with a joint lock, you couldn't do better than the American lock because it will create a spiral fracture in your opponent's arm, which will absolutely take anyone out of the fight to a point where they cannot even perform even if, if they they couldn't even pick up a gun or a knife with that arm again. It's, it's out, it's out of commission. Um, so it, it, for that reason alone, I believe every Jiu Jitsu player has a duty to learn the move because it's it's the safest one to use in, in a self defense situation. You don't have to do anything crazy. You don't have to, you know, spin around or do some kind of elaborate movement. You can do it with no warm up against people who are much bigger than yourself, and its its potential to inflict injury is is uh, very very impressive. Um, but there's this whole problem. Okay, that's great, but I. I don't get into fights. I'm interested in jiu-jitsu for, for sporting purposes. And if you look at the sport of jiu-jitsu, the American lock's really not that successful. I believe it's because most people are taught the American lock very much in a white belt context. And they're taught a very simplified version of the American lock, which is easy for a guy on his first class, an introduction class, to, to see and understand. And at a, at a white belt level, that simplified version will work. But then when you get into more advanced classes, your opponents know how to defend the American, they've seen it before, it stops working. So a big part of what we're doing in this video is to show a much more sophisticated rendition of the American lock, where the mechanics are, are significantly better than the traditional Americana that's taught in, in, in white belt classes, where it has a real chance to, to, uh, to do terrible damage in a self-defense situation and submit someone uh, in, a, in a sports situation. Um, the other big thing that we bring in here, which might surprise our viewers, uh, is that <clears throat> I believe some of the best 
information that you can get with regards to American logs comes from a very unexpected source, and this is the sport of arm wrestling. Plus, you know, can I borrow you? Yeah. When you look at the sport of arm wrestling, you see certain lessons. When two guys are on a table and they hook up, typically they have a handle that they grip on the table, and the two of them lock up like so. One of the big demands, come in close, one of the big demands in the sport of arm wrestling, in terms of safety protocols, if my hand goes outside the line of my shoulder in an arm wrestling situation, this starts to put us into a position which in the sport of arm wrestling is actually called the arm break position. So many people get catastrophic uh, spiral fractures of the humerus bone, the upper arm bone, that they actually make it, uh, they actually talk about this position as the arm break position. The more I open my chest away from my, uh, my arm that I'm using in the arm wrestle uh, situation, the more likely it is that I'm gonna suffer a spiral fracture of the upper arm. So what good arm wrestlers do is they focus on keeping the hand inside the shoulder. And if they ever feel they're starting to lose in this situation, they will track their head with their hand so that they always keep the hand inside the shoulder. And that's how they maintain safety in these very, very challenging environments. If you start to break that protocol, and turn away from it, that's exactly when you see those terrible injuries. If you, that's so interesting. If you ever want to see like, what can happen with an American lock, just go on YouTube, YouTube and, yeah. look, and look at <laughs> arm wrestling injuries and you'll see the kind of damage that a good American lock can inflict. Now, my thing was when I started understanding there was this relationship between arm wrestling and the American lock, so I said, what are the lessons we can draw here? And what you see is there are certain things that can make the American lock less effective from a defensive perspective. I've always got to keep my hand inside the shoulder. And then we started to look at, okay, well, what are the ramifications of this with Jiu-Jitsu? Um, how do you inflict maximum damage? How do you create a spiral fracture in an opponent's arm? And many of the uh, conclusions I came to with my research on the American lock came from the sport of arm wrestling and lessons learned in, in that regard. Um, here's a, a good example of this. Plus, if you're down, okay. Um, we understand in the sport of arm wrestling, they keep themselves safe by keeping the hand inside the shoulder. Okay. Okay. And as long as the hand is inside the shoulder, they're, they're relatively safe in these positions. If I could ever get my opponent's hand outside of the shoulder, that's exactly when you start putting people under stress with a good American rock. The problem is there's nothing to stop your opponent turning with you. So when I go to apply pressure for an American lock, you can turn. Now, this comes at a price that he's going to expose his second arm to another attack. We, we'll look at that in the video. But still, it would be nice if I could stop the guy turning with me. As a general rule, the closer Placido's hands are together, the, easier, the harder it is for me to go into an American lock. And the more he can turn with the American, the safer he's going to be and the, the, the less stress I'm going to put his arm under. So we look at a bunch of ways in this video on, on how we can prevent this guy going into these predictable defensive reactions so we can really start hitting good American locks on people. One of our favorite things to do is take elbows out of position and go into side crucifix positions. So we're gonna start off in a position like so, and then from here, we're gonna start the action of walking around our training partner, getting his hands out of position. Once the hands go out of position, then from here, we can hit a side crucifix. Yeah, this leaves us with an isolated point. arm. If, he's a, if he takes his arm defensively, so now I've got Kimura and I've got Jutigatami on this arm. So he can't do that. He's got to keep the hand in front of me. Now, when we go to grab the hand, we want to make sure we get the end of the lever. So we grab right there at the back of the hand. And we start an action of turning our training partner into a good American rock. Now, when we come up to our knees, we're in the perfect position to call all the mechanics that we talk about in this video and create a truly scary American rock. By isolating the arms one from the other, you create conditions where you can take the American lock from being a relatively low percentage move into a very, very high percentage move. So we look at all these elements. What makes it hard to get an experienced opponent and put him into an American lock? It's typically bound up with things like, well, his hands are close together. His hands are inside of his shoulders. And if we can start pulling those arms apart and creating situations where you put him into the, the arm break position of arm wrestling, well then suddenly your percentages shoot up and you can take this relatively low percentage of submission and elevate it to something that really works. Then when you establish a reputation as someone who's got a really strong Americana, your opponent starts reacting defensively, then you team it up with other moves, Jujigatami arm bars, yep. Kimura, and then suddenly you've got this incredible weapon which had been so undervalued for so long, if you look in competition, yep. you hardly ever see it, and suddenly you can turn to something that really works 
against competitive people. And at the same time, for the rest of your life, you've got something in your back pocket that if you had to pull it out in a self-defense situation, it would be an absolutely devastating weapon. Yeah, and uh, John, uh, two comments I would make here is like, uh, one is one of the coolest things that I learned from Gordon, that he learned from you, is using Americanas as a thread yes. to start other attacks. Yes. So he, he, he taught me, honestly, I watched this watching, it was not even like a, was watching one of his videos. The idea that he used when he's in the mount, that he used the same Americana bowl yes. here to start finding opportunities. So that was fascinating. And instead of doing like this, goes like this. But anyways, one of the most common jiu-jitsu threats that I think special beginners always go for, they go for Americana, the person exposure his arm and then they go to the arm bar. So I love the idea of like using Americana. Taking those foundational principles and dressing them up with more uh, more mechanically efficient details about how to grip, where to grip, when to grip, suddenly takes it from being a move which might work well up to like advanced white or maybe lower blue belt level, into something which really works well at the upper levels. And uh, there's so many intricacies with the American lock, and I think it's been undervalued largely because it's taught in a way which is very simple to comprehend to a beginner, but which does a disservice to what the actual potential in the lock is, where if you add a lot of mechanical details and then put it in, in the context of good tactics to set it up, separating your training partner's arms, uh, forcing your opponent to turn over and expose the second arm, forcing them into underhook situations so you can go to different locks. If you embed good mechanics with those better tactics, you can make the American lock a way better move than it's ever been given credit for. And um, I love the idea of it because I've always I, I truly believe that the foundations of jiu-jitsu are uh, everything. Yeah. Like, like you, you can have a great career in jiu-jitsu just with foundations. I've always the stuff that you learn the first yes, week. The, the stuff you learn your first month in jiu-jitsu could easily create a career if you just stuck with those moves, and you could be amazing just with that. I've always believed that, and even relatively early in my career, I was always kind of disappointed in the American lock. So I used to, I, I, my first teaching job in jiu-jitsu was teaching the introduction courses for Henzo Gracie in New York City yep. many, many years ago. And I always was struck by the fact that, you know, I'm teaching this American law, but Where I is, hardly ever yeah. use it when, yeah. against guys by yeah. own level. Oh, and what, one interesting thing that I was thinking as well while you were talking about that is that I agree with you that the percentage of Americanists in tournaments overall are very low, but if you only analyze white belts, I think it's probably yes. pretty high, like, because yes. it works for white belts. Yes, my, my point is, if you, it, um, the, the problem is that people always think that all I teach is advanced jiu -jitsu. They realize that I oh. taught beginner jiu -jitsu long before I taught advanced jiu -jitsu. And I 100% I agree with you. If you watch ADCC, you won't see too many American logs. You watch the average beginner class, white belt class across America, you'll see a ton of American yeah. logs, yeah. a lot of them. And if you watch self-defense situations, like American mm -hmm. locks, um, someone, if someone doesn't know how to defend an American lock, it is an absolutely devastating weapon. It will snap an arm like a toothpick if it's done properly. Yep. Um, uh, so uh, I think when people first come into Jiu-Jitsu, they have to learn it. And if they add the sophisticated elements that we show in this video, it will carry over much more from white belt class up much, much higher than anyone believed possible. And then you get the whole other side of the equation, which is if you've developed a reputation as someone who does have a strong American log, your opponents have to react in very predictable fashion. Yep. And that feeds into all the other moves that team up with it that we looked at. And done in this light, the American log, I think, can be an incredible addition to even a very advanced Jiu-Jitsu athletes arsenal. And as you said with Gordon, Gordon doesn't finish many people with American locks, but he, but that he as a threatens friend. them yeah. with them all the time. Yeah. And off those threats, that's where he gets a lot of his best upper body submissions. Yeah. No, that's super interesting. Yeah, no, that's incredible. Yeah, so guys, this instruction is going to be part of the Master Master the Move series. And the, uh, it's going to be at bgjfanatics.com very soon. Maybe by the time you're watching, it's already there. So make sure to check that out and master the American lock. Thank you, John. Good to see you. Please help me out to grow my YouTube channel. Just click subscribe. And to watch more videos, just click under see more videos. I hope you enjoyed. BJJFanatics.com. Use the promo code YouTubeFaria to get 10% off any instructional video. Improve your jujitsu faster.